Hello students, in this session we will discuss about solitens. First of all, what do you mean by solitens? Solitens are very narrow, high intensity optical pulses. And these pulses can propagate undisturbed over long distances and that can remain unaffected after collision with each other. So such type of pulses are used in the case of optical fiber communication. And depending upon the particular shape chosen, the pulse either doesn't change its shape as it propagated. So such type of soliton pulses are called fundamental solitens. Sometimes these soliton pulses undergoes periodical changes. That means that may repeat, uh, that the changes may be repeated um, after some time interval. And such type of solitens are called higher order solitens. So there are two types of solitens, fundamental solitens and the higher order solitens. So attenuation, see we know that when a light signal is propagated through the optical fiber there may be some attenuation occur for that light signal. So attenuation in the fiber decreases the soliton energy. Therefore the periodically spaced optical amplifiers are required in a soliton link and this amplifiers restores the pulse energy. So in the case of soliton when it is propagating through the optical fiber sometimes there may be attenuation but uh, there is no change in the shape of the waveform that is the speciality of the solitens due to the see uh, we can in the next we can see how this um, how this shape of the soliton is um, maintained in the maintained in the case of soliton so um, we know that in the case of transmission of light signal through the optical fiber there are different phenomena such as dispersion and due to the dispersion uh, the pulse width may be broad and say. so due to group velocity dispersion that is represented by gvd most of the pulses broaden also there is another phenomena that is self phase modulation uh, in the case of uh, light signals when it is transmitted through the optical fiber in self phase modulation the refractive um, uh, the pulse shape uh, changes, uh, uh, the, the excitation or the light pulse changes the refractive index um, uh, when it is transmitted through the optical fiber. So there are different phenomena such as uh, group velocity dispersion and self phase modulation. Uh, do, group velocity dispersion broadens the pulse when it is transmitted through the optical fiber and self phase modulation in, induces phase fluctuations in the propagating pulse. So self phase modulation or SPM modulation causes the pulse to narrow. So in solitens it takes an advantage of the self phase modulation to overcome the pulse broadening effects of GVDC. When, we, uh, when the pulse undergoes a group velocity dispersion it broadens. But due to the effect of self phase modulation that broadens the effect of that broadening of the pulse is reduced because actually self phase modulation reduces the um, pulse. Uh, so, the effect of GVD is cancelled out by the SPM that means self phase modulation effect. Let us see its details. So, what do you mean by self phase modulation? When a high intensity optical pulse is coupled to a fiber, the optical power modulated the refractive index seen by the optical excitation and this induces phase fluctuations in the propagating wave thereby producing chirping effect in the pulse and this phenomena is called a cell phase modulation see this is an optical pulse or suppose this is an optical pulse which is uh, transmitted through the optical fiber it has got a front end which is denoted plus dn by dt and that is a variation um, with the refractive index is denoted by dn by dt and next is a minus dn by dt um, that is a variation of the refractive index uh, with the time is shown Due to this self phase modulation, there will be some changes in the optical power. Uh, that means you know that is self phase modulation. In the case of self phase modulation, the optical power modulated the refractive index. So, there will be some changes due to self phase modulation. There will be some changes in the refractive index profile. See, you can see that there is a chirping, frequency chirping takes place at, at this point at 0. Uh, so, the pulse will look like this. You can see here that means the result is the front end of the pulse has lower frequency and the back of the pulse has a higher frequency. So this is the refractive index variation or optical power variation and due to the frequency chirping the pulse will look like this in the case of self phase modulation.
see when the soliton and, and we are comparing um, the effect of and see we are uh, now analyzing the effect of this frequency chirping or uh, the effect of cell phase modulation uh, and groove velocity uh, dispersion in the case of solitons when a soliton transverses in a medium or a traverses see traverses in a medium with a positive groove velocity dispersion the leading part of the pulse is shifted towards a longer wavelength so that speed in that portion increases similarly in the trailing half the speed decreases this causes the trailing edge to be further delayed see suppose this is the form of a soliton pulse when it is traveling through the optical fiber the leading portion this portion this portion due to the effect of positive groove velocity dispersion there is um, the pulse will broaden you know that uh, the leading part of the pulse is shifted towards a longer wavelength so that the speed in that portion increases when speed increases the first front end of this pulse will move faster similarly there is a, another end that is back end and the trailing half of, uh, in the case in and also in the trailing half of the speed decreases as when the speed decreases it will be delayed this portion will be delayed and this will, um, this will be this portion will get faster and as a result the as a result this pulse will look when it travels some distance the pulse will be broadened like this that means at a, after um, after some time the pulse will look like in the form of a rectangular shape that is shown in here this is the effect of the positive groove velocity dispersion and this figure shows the temporal changes in the narrow high intensity pulse that is subjected to the kerr effect which is a non linear effect and it travels through the non linear dispersive medium that is a positive gvd parameter next we will see what is the effect of negative groove velocity dispersion when a narrow high intensity pulse traverses a medium with a negative groove velocity dispersion this groove velocity dispersion retards the low frequency in the front end of the pulse and advances high frequency at the back so the negative groove velocity dispersion in negative groove velocity dispersion what is happening is actually the first end that is front end of the portion of the pulse or soliton speed will be retarded so it will move slower and but in the case of back end it will be fast end so that the pulse width is reduced so the soliton when transmitted through the optical fiber it maintains its shape that means it nullify the effect of group velocity dispersion by the spm effect the result is that a high intensity sharply peaked soliton pulse changes neither its shape nor its spectrum as it travels along the fiber and figure below shows the fundamental soliton see if in the figure you can see that the shape is maintained throughout that means when the distance along the fiber increases shape is the same as it is the figure shows the characteristics of a high intensity sharply peaked soliton pulse that is subjected to the kerr effect as it is. kerr effect means a non linear effect it actually indicates spm effect and it as it travels through a non linear dispersive fiber that has a negative gvd parameter so this will be the shape of the soliton pulse next we will see the equations for the soliton pulse first of all in order to you uh, in order to get the equation for the soliton first we will consider the non linear schrodinger equation which is nls equation and which has the form of minus j do u by do z dip equal to 1 by 2 do square u by do t square plus n square modulus of u square into u minus j into alpha by 2 into u this is the non linear schrodinger equation in this u of z comma t actually u is expressed in the parameter z and t u of z comma t is the pulse envelope function and z is the propagation distance along the fiber n is the integer which designates the order of the soliton and alpha is the coefficient this is alpha the coefficient of the energy gain per unit length and here the first term this is the first term represents the, actually this represents the soliton pulse equation and here first term represents the gvd effect of the fiber and the second term represents the spm that means uh, it actually represents the refractive uh, denotes the refractive index of the fiber depends upon the light intensity and the third uh, third term um, actually it represents the cell phase modulation process and the third term represents the effect of the energy loss or gain 
and uh, th th that may be due to the fiber attenuation or optical amplification uh, respectively solutions of this equation is of the form and which for which is for the fundamental soliton um, soliton the solution is u of z comma t is equal to c h of t in exponential j z by 2 where c h of t is the hyperbolic secant function actually there is a spelling mistake actually it is a secant function and it is of the form of a bell shaped form this is a secant function so this is a soliton soliton form and its equation is u of z comma t secant of h of t ex exponential j z by 2 actually in this case exponential function has no influence on the shape of the pulse the soliton that means the soliton is independent of z here exponential function is a function of z so it has no effect on the shape of the pulse that means the soliton is independent of z that means the soliton is non dispersive in the time domain so next we will see the phase shift which is associated with associated with the um, soliton pulse uh, due to the nonlinear effect, the phase change or phase shift is equal to d phi nonlinear is equal to modulus of u of t square into dz, which is equal to c h square of t into dz. Similarly, in the case of dispersion effect, the phase shift associated with the soliton due to dispersion is d phi dispersion is equal to 1 by 2 u into dou square u by 2 u into dou t square into dz, which is equal to 1 by 2 minus c h square t dz. So, these are the phase shift associated with the soliton pulse when it is tra um, transmitted through the nonlinear or dispersive medium. And the corresponding soliton pulse waveform is shown in the here. You can see here that this is the relative phase delay and the normalized time. You can see here this is the shape and this is phase shift uh, uh, when uh, it is transmitted through the nonlinear medium and it is a shape when it is transmitted through the dispersive medium. So, dispersive and nonlinear phase effects of a soliton pulse is shown there and you can see that there is some is a constant which yields a common phase shift for the entire pulse see when you are taking the sum you can see that this portion has a one amplitude this is this has got a minus 0.5 so it will got a magnitude of 0.5 here so the sum waveform will be shown like the dotted line that means it will be a constant line and actually this this shows the secant function which is actually the shape of the soliton pulse Next, we will see the soliton parameters. First of all, we will see full width half maximum power that, that is FWHM of a soliton pulse. Full width half maximum power of a pulse is defined as the full width of the pulse at its half maximum power level. So, the, see you can see the, this is shown in the fear. This is the um, normalized power and this is this is represented by the soliton pulse and this is expressed in um, normalized unit half maximum power duration is shown here this is uh, ts by t0 see this is the full width half maximum power or fwhm time period ts of a fundamental soliton pulse is found from the equation seek h square of tau equal to 1 by 2 where tau equal to ts by 2 t0 where t0 is the basic normalized time units and t0 will be equal to ts by 2 cos h inverse root 2 that is equal to ts by 1.7620 that is equal to 0.567 ts so this is the time of corresponding to the time period corresponding to the full width half maximum power and it is represented in this figure that is ts by D0 is represented here. See normalized power is 1 here and this is corresponding to this point is corresponding to the point 5 that is half power. So this period is corresponding to this full width half maximum power. And the normalized distance parameter also called dispersion length that is represented by L dispersion that is here. And uh, actually it is a characteristic length for the effects of the dispersion term and the L dispersion is obtained by the equation 2 pi c into t0 square divided by lambda square into d where capital D is representing the dispersion and lambda e is representing the wavelength c is the velocity of light and when we are substituting 
for t0 we will get 1 by 2 cos h inverse root 2 all square into 2 pi c ts square divided by lambda square d that will be giving the equation 0 0.32 to 2 pi c by lambda square into ts square by d and uh, these equations will be useful for doing problems uh, and next we will see the parameter uh, peak power and this peak power is obtained by the equation p peak equal to a effective divided by 2 pi n to l dispersion into lambda that is equal to 1.7627 divided by 2 pi whole square into a effective into lambda cube divided by n 2 c into d by t s square where a effective is effective area of the fiber core n 2 is the non-linear intensity dependent refractive index coefficient and l dispersion is measured in kilometer similarly the period for the soliton pulse is obtained by l period is equal to pi by 2 l dispersion so that's all about this topic. Thank you.